it gives us an opportunity to discuss or to have a conversation about what happened then, what happens now, and how we move forward in the future. Julian Sinzogan's works are extremely compelling and they are works that should be seen by the public in general because the story is relevant today even though it happened hundreds of years ago. I first heard about Julian Sinzogan, the artist, from a dear friend of ours, Miriam Bouchard. She had worked with him in the African region, and she saw the work that he was doing and began to promote him. And subsequent to learning of him, I took a trip to Paris, and while there, my wife Mary and I, we met with him. and got to know him uh, and also to see him at work and that was our first encounter with him and this is what began the project. We were very interested in working with Julian Zinzogan because he was telling the story of the removal of Africans from the African continent the thing that was so compelling was that he told how this infamous trading in human lives impacted not only people and families, but it impacted the entire continent of Africa. Sinzogan has done many, many works, but there were five pieces in particular that we spoke with him about First, I'll talk about the marketplace. The marketplace depicted a typical African market, be it West Africa, East Africa, North Africa, where people are engaged in transactions, selling fruit, vegetables, live animals, various other crafts and things of that nature for their consumption. The marketplace and people's lives. There was another one that he showed where he had taken the marketplace and he had divided it in half. On one half you had the traditional African market. On the other half of the image you had the market in human flesh. In other words, captured people being sold to European traders to be exported to the West as slave labor. That was not the one we published. We published one of the traditional African marketplace. Another piece that he did was called Culture Shock. Culture Shock depicts Africans in their small vessels on the ship, on the ocean, going about their daily activities when they are confronted or met by these huge slaving vessels that were coming into their waters. They did not know what was happening, but it wasn't long before they discovered that these were the ships that would begin to extract the Africans from the African continent and enslave them in the West. Culture shock. The next piece that we published with him was called Exorcism. Exorcism was depicting destroyed slave ships, beached, deteriorating, dilapidated, signifying the end of an infamous period of trading in African bodies. After that piece, we did another one 
That was called the Armada. Armada 1 and Armada 2. Armada was very significant because it showed two ships returning back to Africa and in the sails of the ships we saw various African motifs, African symbols representing the African continent. These banners were in the mast and above the ships we saw people floating and they were adorned with vibrant colors. As the ship made its journey back to West Africa, the colors changed. They went from a sepia tone to very vibrant colors actually representing the rejuvenation of the African spirits. And the closer they got to the African continent, the bolder and brighter the colors became, both in the, in the people, known as the spirits or the Egungun, and in the ships themselves. That was Armada 1 and Armada 2. He takes the souls of African ancestors and he doesn't leave them into the Americas and other parts of the world. These spirits, these souls, these people of Egungun, they returned and he shows our spirits returning to the African continent on vessels once again. However, this time they are not chained into the bowels of the ships. The spirits float above the ships as the ships return to the West African coast. So he reconnects our spirits to the African continent and this is something that I think is extremely important. It's a very compelling story to understand that we were not left alone. The spirits of our ancestors returned and with their return it also offers the opportunity for those of us who are the descendants to return to Africa again. If not in the physical flesh, we can return spiritually.